It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 2264, Some Lessons on Decluttering and Simplifying Mindfully by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your narrator. Happy President's Day if you're in the US or if you're outside the US, happy Monday. And we'll get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Some Lessons on Decluttering and Simplifying Mindfully by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. This month, I'm decluttering by playing along with the minimalists for their men's game. It goes like this. Day one, get rid of one thing. Day two, two things, and so on until day 30, where you get rid of 30 items. At the time of writing this, I'm on day 15 and have purged 121 items from my home. These have ranged from books and clothes to more random items, such as the extra nutcracker I found in my cutlery drawer. I hope to never be in the position to need two nutcrackers, worst job ever. There aren't many rules, just purge the items before midnight each day. I'm not really into rules though. For me, the game is about getting rid of clutter while being kind to myself. Playing the game is actually just another point on my to-do list every day this month. So if I have a busy day and don't get it done, I'm not gonna kill myself doing a midnight run to the Sally store. Decluttering versus mindful decluttering. The part of me that wants to declutter and minimize my physical belongings is very often in direct conflict with the part of me that wants to simplify my life and do everything I can to reduce my environmental footprint. And trying to marry these concepts up can be tricky, but it can be done. So I decided that this time around, I'd play the men's game mindfully. That is, deciding where each item will be rehomed, most of my things have been donated, or repurposed, like the broken electric blanket I'm making into a mattress protector, rather than adding the item to our rubbish bin. This has been fairly easy so far, but as I get closer to the end of the month, it's going to get hard. You see, there are quite a lot of items in our homes that no one else would want like the free items you accepted from your grandma or the chemist where you spend your paycheck. Case in point, the free makeup brushes I got when I bought my last lot of foundation. So it leaves me wondering, why did I accept this free item in the first place? I've put free in quotation marks because ultimately this item was not free. It has cost me space in my home, albeit a small amount, and space in my head deciding what to do with said item and then it has cost me time to declutter it. This is just one example, but there are many more things like this in our house. And when you add up all those free items and all the time and space it's cost you, well, you get my point. And herein lies lesson number one. Mindfully refuse things that you don't need. Easier said than done sometimes. If you know that you don't need the hand-me-down clothes from your sister-in-law's auntie, then just say no. Politely, of course, but flex that no muscle. You don't have to accept everything that comes your way, like the free saucepan that comes with the set upgrade at Briscoe's that you don't really need because you're already purchasing six. Free is always tempting, but if you can't immediately think of a use for it, refuse. Also, don't be fooled into thinking you'll try and sell it or give it away. Chances are it'll sit in a cupboard until the next time you declutter. Or if you really must accept a free item, then challenge yourself to give it away in the same day. My second take out for this month so far is not really about the challenge or minimizing or decluttering at all. It's about being kind to myself. My month didn't start off well. I spent a good five days of the first two weeks down a hole of overwhelm. I missed several days of decluttering. I missed my weekly blog post for the first time in three months. I was completely drained and exhausted. When I realized I had quite a few days of this challenge to catch up on, my brain immediately went to quitting mode. It's too late, I've missed too many days, I've failed. Today, day 15, I've picked myself back up, dusted myself off, and caught up. So lesson number two, be kind to myself. Stuff happens, life is unpredictable. Kids get sick, mums get PMS. You overcommit yourself. The dishwasher breaks down. And yup, it can all happen in the same week. Grace is a crucial component of taking on any challenge. 
whether it be a decluttering challenge or a healthy eating challenge or something a bit more serious like quitting smoking. We are human, completely and utterly imperfect and designed to fail. That's why grace and forgiveness are needed. I'm glad I didn't decide to quit my challenge for the month. I'm 115 items lighter and it feels fantastic. I've already learned and relearned two important lessons as well. Onwards and upwards. If anyone out there is playing along or if you think you might wanna give it a go, here are a few guidelines I'm using to help me. This month, I have to stick to my items only. I'm not touching the girls' toys, books, or any of my husband's things. Kitchen is fair game though, since that's predominantly my space. I'm determined to think mindfully about what to do with each and every item. I don't wanna add 500 items to landfill. Learn from the challenge. The biggest thing we can do to reduce our rubbish is to refuse items. We have to think carefully when we are offered things. Teach, try to involve the kids in what I'm doing. And be kind to myself. Like I said before, if I have a busy day on day 21, I'll just add those items to day 22. Also, I'm not gonna bust a gut to get to the recycling center before it shuts every day. Being in the boot of my car is good enough. You just listened to the post titled Some Lessons on Decluttering and Simplifying Mindfully by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. Thank you to Emma. I remember starting the minimalism game many, many years ago. And at my place, I just didn't feel like I could do it without really starting to get rid of things that I believed actually added value to my life. Now, if I did it back at my family's house where my room is and here where I record, and where there's stuff from so many years ago, then I probably could have done it. But in my main living space, not so much. And I'm not saying that to brag that I'm living minimally or something, because honestly, that's probably a bit of an excuse, and I'm sure I could have continued the game if I pushed myself. But that's where lesson number two from today's post comes in, being kind to yourself and accepting what is. If something like a minimalism game ends up in shame or negative self-talk, it's really not worth it. If that's the case, then working on minimizing that first might do a bit more good. And if you wanna learn more about minimizing negative self-talk, keep listening because we definitely visit that topic frequently on this show, or you can go back and listen to older episodes. In either case, thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day, President's Day here in the US, and I'll see you tomorrow in the Tuesday show where there'll be plenty of twos as it's February 22nd. And that's where your optimal life awaits.